So we're here at the Embedded World and uh, you just arrived. Yes, I did. So what do you think so far? Uh, well, I just got in, so I can't really say much. But I've met my good friend Thomas here. What does he do? Hey, hello, I work for uh, Free Electrons. So we're a French-based uh, embedded electronic services company. And we're here on the Atmel booth to showcase uh, what we've done with Atmel on the Linux kernel. So what do you think about what they do? It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we're, we've been we've known each other for like 12, 13, 15 years now. No, 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 no. Yeah, we've been, you know, been doing embedded Linux, he's been doing embedded Linux, and you know, life is good. What kind of work are uh, they doing? What kind of work they are doing? Um, how about you go, <laughs> you take a stab at that. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we mainly do Linux kernel work. Uh, so we uh, work with several SOC vendors, uh, but Mail is one of them, and we help them push to the official Linux kernel uh, the support for their ARM SOCs. So we are now for, uh, for the 4.0 kernel that's going to be released in the next uh, few months. Uh, will be, I think, the, uh, the seventh contributing company in number of patches. Seventh? Yes, yeah, seventh, absolutely, next to uh, Google and Linaro and uh, ARM and the others. Are you in front of Linaro or uh, just after? Um, I think it, I think oh, it depends on the, on the kernel releases, but mainly I believe we are after. But how many guys are you in the company? Uh, six engineers. 250. Six? <laughs> six guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the company is nine, nine persons, but we have uh, six engineers doing uh, kernel work. Yes. So, sorry. So it's possible as few few guys to do a lot of work in the embedded Linux stuff? Absolutely. I mean, um, that's at least that's what got me into Linux, is you don't actually need a lot of infrastructure. You just need to have the will and uh, proper people to do the work. So in our case, you know, we've been helping customers take Android and put it in all sorts of devices, and we're practically the same size as they are. Um, and you know, you don't need to, you don't need hundreds of people. You just need to have the right people. How do you find the right guys? <laughs> Beauty is straight secret. I'll keep that one to myself. I keep the same. <laughs> I think you can say the same thing anyway. So, uh, like a couple of years ago, you you were talking in one of my videos about uh, Android for embedded world. Yes. So what's the status? What's the status of the use of Android in embedded devices? Um, it's everywhere. I mean, okay, so I was there, you know, uh, I was just happened to be there when Linux took off in the embedded world, say, 13, 14 years ago. Um, and people would put it and wouldn't advertise it. It wouldn't necessarily say, this is running Linux. Nowadays, all the embedded devices out there that are running any sort of 32-bit operating system are practically all running Linux. And the same thing kind of goes with the Android these days with the user interfaces. If it's got a UI and it's running a 32 or 64-bit processor, it's you know it's it's a very good candidate for embedded Android. So, what do you think about Android for embedded? Well, uh, there are lots of uh, well situations where Android is appropriate, uh, consumer devices, or as is, as uh, Karim said, uh, devices that have that need a rich UI, and Android is perfect for, for this uh, this type of uh, usage. In our case, we work mainly with uh, industrial customers that do more deeply embedded devices. They may not even have a screen. Nobody knows that the device is here. So not many people know about those devices, but also many of them run with Linux, sometimes some real-time variants of, of Linux. And in this case, Android is not always used, and there are still a lot of cases where Android is not used. Um, Atmel, for example, they do a lot of um, SOCs that are widely used in the industrial space, and Android is not really a good match for, uh, for such SOCs. And still, uh, those SOCs have lots of uh, serial ports and communication um, uh, devices that make it really nice for the industrial space. So I think it's uh, kind of uh, each operating system for its for its different types of markets. And there's some more and more powerful embedded uh, processors that run Linux great, no? Yes. Well, indeed, yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to do here at the embedded world? What's, uh, what's your plan? Well, I do have a workshop tomorrow. Uh, about embedded Android, so um, that's my main plan. But today I'm gonna just uh, walk around the show, uh, the show floor, and see what's what's uh, what's new. Cool. And you showing stuff? Yeah, we're showing uh, some basic demo. Yes. Cool. So let's go check it out. Yep. All right. So I'll catch up with you guys later. Yeah. So let's jump in there. Right at the point where there are many people around. Yeah. 
So what are you showing over there? So what we're showing over here yeah. is um, an ML. This is a customer. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that what we're showing here we want to yeah. is development uh, on the Linux kernel. Yeah. So this is a Sun A5 T4 3 sorry, uh, board, and we've done for them the development for the LCD driver. So uh, I did the development and then all the work with the kernel maintainers to get this driver merged into the, the Linux kernel. So as you can see over here, it's actually quite funny because our driver, the PRM KMS, was supposed to be merged in Kino 3.20, but we had to live patch our cluster because the Minister decided to rename this Kino version 4.0 just a few days ago. So it was too late for us to adjust the, the poster. So in 4.0, uh, this Atmel platform will have a full-featured uh, LCD driver in the Linux kernel. So you've been busy to do a bunch of stuff in for the 4.0? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. As, as I just said, we'll be, we'll be the seventh uh, contributing company to 4.0. And how many guys are you uh, right here at the booth? Uh, actually, four of us are here. Uh, right now, it's just the two of us. It's time. It's lunch what do you do? Right now. What I'm doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the uh, guys supporting uh, Linux kernel mainlining for uh, Atmel. I'm actually working on that, and uh, yeah, that, that's basically what I do. Is is it, what I've done for the 4.0. Kernel. Is it the hard work, or is it easy? Uh, oh, it, it, it actually quite <laughs> depends on the uh, the um, IP that you are trying to support in the kernel. Uh, I've been busy with. Um, uh, with cleaning up uh, the uh, core support for Atmel chips. So I did a lot of uh, power management stuff. I did, uh, I removed a lot of uh, dead code and unused code and that kind of things. So uh, free electrons, you have many customers? Yes, I think we have uh, for a company, a small size company that, that we are. Uh, yes, we believe we have a, a good number of customers. We work here with Atmel. We also work with uh, with Marvel on uh, similar type of projects, doing kernel mainlining. We've pushed uh, hundreds of patches to support Marvel processors in the last uh, three years, and then we work with a lot of um, uh, embedded system makers, maybe mainly in the industrial area, um, and they do products like in the medical space or um, uh, automation or other types of uh, usually deeply embedded uh, uh, products. So you always busy. Uh, pretty much, yes. And so, what's the next big thing? What's the next big thing? Yeah. Uh, you mean for us? Or? Yeah, what's the next big challenge with uh, embedded Linux or uh, upstreaming, all that stuff? Well, uh, upstreaming more and more uh, support for additional SOCs. Uh, we work for with a few SOC vendors and more and more SOC vendors are getting engaged uh, with the uh, upstream kernel work. But not all of them and there are still uh, quite a few SOC vendors that should do uh, this effort as well, so I guess that's the next big step. And another next big step, in my opinion, is the issue of uh, GPU support. Um, it's all going to be open source, right? Yeah, it's, it would be it would be great. It's still not the case, unfortunately. And I believe uh, a lot of um, silicon vendors and uh, well embedded system makers would be really happy to see one um, well GPU IP designer provide open source drivers for for this uh, open and not just reverse engineer GPU not, yes not which is which is not the same right it's not the same reverse engineering I believe is really cool it's nice to have that but it's usually going to happen way after the, the product has been made so it's usually too late for real products to use uh, something like that so it's technically really great hopefully it's gonna push at some point to the uh, GPU designers to do something with open source drivers but they should do it themselves. Do you do a bunch of stuff with 64-bit ARM? Uh, it's it's somewhere on the radar. There's not much I can say about it. Uh, ah, you have lots moment. of secret projects too. Well, yeah. we work with SOC vendors, so they have their own roadmaps, and uh, we have some knowledge about their roadmaps that we cannot disclose. Do you work with Linaro guys? Um, not necessarily. We do work with them uh, in the open, in the community. Many Linaro guys are maintainers of various kernel subsystems, so we do interact a lot with them on the kernel mailing list. But besides that, we don't have any special interaction with, with Linaro. All right. Cool. So, uh, for electrons, people can take one of those and uh, yeah, what they can read in here. Absolutely. And we uh, also give a lot of trainings. And we are probably the only training company that have free 
a freely available training material, so every slide, every uh, practical lab you can download for free on our website. Where are you based? We're based in France. Where? Um, basically the south of France. I'm in Toulouse, southwest. My colleague Alexandre here is in Lyon. Yep. And we have offices in Orange as well, in the southeast. So you just work uh, from home? Um, I do. Yeah. Alexandre does. Yeah, I do. And uh, But uh, they are, now they have um, office. an office and there are four guys in it. So that's right. good. Cool. So, uh, did did uh, you have a look at our uh, yeah. code editor? This is, this is this is a code editor and you have a debugger there, right? This is a debugger. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah.